Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Um, my name's Jason and I'm just sharing some thoughts today and I uh, hope it's a blessing to you and uh, love to everybody out there. Uh, what we're doing today is we're just going to share some thoughts concerning uh, preaching and ministry uh, through the second epistle of Timothy. And I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. So without further ado, let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for your love. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your blessing. And uh, we thank you for your encouragement. And Father, we pray in your name and for your glory, Lord, that you just might be pleased to bless this study. And may it be an encouragement to people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't forget my website is jasonburnspreacher.com uh, You can also get me on Facebook and you can also get me on Twitter. Um, it's good to be with you. I've had an absolutely magnificent time in studying uh, 2 Timothy. I've uh, been listening to some uh, preachers at, uh, at Moore College <clears throat> um, and um, people like Dick, Dick Lucas um, and other uh, preachers and uh, they were preaching on 2 Timothy and it, it blessed me so much. I listened to four of these preachers, spent four hours studying uh, this book and I just want to share some thoughts for those who are preachers because uh, it, it's just welling up in me and I just want to share a few thoughts so I hope it's a blessing to you and an encouragement to you in your ministry. Um, so forgive me, I've got my glasses here, so I'm getting old. So chapter, uh, I am street preaching, um, I'm going out with the team tomorrow, so value your prayers. And um, I'm going to be very busy in the next couple of weeks, so there will be videos of me street preaching coming. Um, so let's let's get on. But oh, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, studying the Word of God. So, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. Now he says, Paul, an apostle. And it's interesting to know, the last 100 years, Paul's been under attack. And in the 19th century, the liberal theologians tried to pit our Lord Jesus against Paul and said Paul was different from the Lord Jesus in his teaching and uh, even the last uh, 20 years there's been an emphasis on saying that some of Paul's epistles are not actually Paul's epistles so scholars are saying that some scholars are saying that we don't we, we shouldn't say that certain letters such as the pastoral epistles for example this one is not of Paul so it's interesting here, we read, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul was an authoritative apostle. He was chosen by the Lord to proclaim the gospel. So if you attack the apostle Paul and his letters, you're in effect attacking the gospel. It says, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the promise of life. Verse 1, according to the promise of life. As preachers, we are preaching life. We are preaching hope. We are preaching life. Always remember that. That you're not there to put people down. You're, you're preaching real life. Life, liberty, joy, peace. New spiritual life. Verse 2, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy and peace from God. The Father and the Lord Jesus, uh, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. So here he's, he's ministering to a younger man. And we need to be passing on the baton to, to, to the younger generation. Are, are you spending time with the younger generation? training the younger generation, encouraging the younger generation, praying for the younger generation. 
Paul here is praying for Timothy. Verse 4, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt in first in thy grandmother Louise, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. There's a great privilege in being a child who's been born or into a Christian family. If you're a young person today, don't sit there moaning that, oh, my mum and dad's a Christian. It was a great privilege for Timothy. Timothy was brought up in a Christian family and he was blessed because of it. And you as a young person, if you've been brought up in a Christian family, it's a blessing because you're being taught the faith early on in your life. Verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stirred up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. You have a gift. As a preacher you have a gift. As an evangelist you have a gift. And you've got to stir it up. You've got to continue to use that gift. If you don't, then that gift will deteriorate. So you need to stir yourself up with your gift. For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. A lot of people today in the churches are growing cold and discouraged. I was reading an article uh, in the Banner of Truth uh, by Maurice Roberts, and he was saying how uh, the churches uh, are growing cold, that people are, are feeling that they're never going to see victory in, in the nation, that... There's a sense of defeat. Um, and we can look at the rise of uh, the enemies in, in this nation and we can get discouraged. But Paul here says, for, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of sound mind. Verse 7. So we've got to be hopeful. We believe in a mighty God, a great God who can move mountains who can do the impossible. So let us not be fearful at this time, but rouse ourselves with boldness at this critical hour as preachers and evangelists and servants of the Lord. Verse 8, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now here's the point. My eyes, are, I get, I'm getting old, folks. Uh, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Right throughout this book in 2 Timothy, there is an emphasis on endure hardship, that the ministry is hard. Let's go to chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 3 uh, Thou therefore endure hardship as a soldier of Jesus Christ um, uh, Verse 22 Flee also youthful lust But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace With them that call on the Lord Have the pure heart uh, Chapter 3 This know also that in the last days Perilous times shall come For men shall be lovers of their own self covetous bolsters we'll go on to that in more detail um, verse uh, 10 of chapter 4 for Demas has forsaken me uh, verse 14 Alexander the copper smith did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his works um, a lot of people think that going into ministry is a very romantic thing that being in ministry being in pastoral ministry or being a missionary or being an evangelist that the somehow it's a very romantic life where you don't have any problems where you've got time to read or you've got time to to do things that other people haven't got time to do um that you're cushioned from the problems of life etc um 
Also, there's, there is a sense amongst evangelicals and the Lord's people that we're owed a good life, that if we're in ministry, we should have a good life. This book completely obliterates these ideas. Here, Paul, as I, I've read those verses, uh, Paul repeatedly, repeatedly in this book reminds us that ministry is hard. Uh, we can see here um, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner but be thou partaker here it is of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God of the afflictions that if you're in ministry you will have afflictions you will have setbacks you will have suffering and pain and difficulty in ministry and uh, we're not exempt from the problems of life if you're in ministry, whether it be as a pastor, an evangelist, as a preacher, or whatever your servant capacity, or a capacity of service within the body of Christ. There'll be setbacks. There'll be people who are critical of your ministry. There'll be people who are listening to your ministry, and then they'll leave your ministry. Let's look at it. I mean, that's one of the most hardest things to deal with the there you are you're teaching you're evangelizing you're preaching the word of god and people then just leave your ministry and and that's what we see here in 2 timothy chapter 3 uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times will come for men shall be lovers of their own self covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedience to parents unthankful and holy without natural affection truth breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady minded etc so society and the church will have a propensity to leave the truth and not want to know the truth and that will be a hard thing to deal with a hard pill to swallow in ministry this is not the picture of ministry that modern evangelicals and the modern church want to paint it's all victorious, it's all wonderful, it's all great. But here, Paul is painting a picture that ministry is hard, it's difficult. That is the, the reality of it. That's why when you meet ministers, at, at ministers fraternals, and when you meet Christians, you say, how are you? And everybody says, oh, I'm okay. When the reality is, you're not okay. The reality is, you're discouraged and you're down. If ministry was so easy, why is it that Timothy needed encouragement? We all need encouragement. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Who have, sorry, <clears throat> who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So your ministry that you have your ministry that you have is a ministry of grace that God has shown you grace the reason why you're in ministry is God has called you and chosen you and not only that that your ministry was given on the basis of grace it was not given because you're such a brilliant person it was not given because of any other reason but God's grace in your life Verse 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of us, Saviour Jesus Christ, who abolished death and have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That is the gospel. We should always remember that whether we're an evangelist, whether we're a pastor or preacher, that we are gospel ministers. That is to say, we are people of the gospel. We preach the gospel. And it's so easy in ministry, especially over the long haul, over the years, that what you find is many ministers cool down and basically stop preaching the gospel and, and live a comfortable life. But that's not what gospel ministry is about. Gospel ministry is not about a comfortable life, but it's about saving souls and proclaiming that new life in Christ. Where I am appointed a preacher, an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause I also suffer, again, here again, suffer these things. 
Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You see, one of the things about this letter that Paul writes is, is basically saying, look, no matter what happens, keep your head, always trust in God, always believe that God is with you. You see, in ministry, it's a life of faith. And sometimes God leads us in difficult areas in ministry where we feel uncomfortable, where we feel we can't deal with it. But if we trust God and keep our eyes on God, then he'll help us in those difficult times. And Paul here is, is, is believing that God can be trusted. Verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, our job as preachers of the word is to hold fast to the word of God. We're not to be preaching new ideas. We're not to be preaching new fangled, um, what can I say, fads. A preacher is to be preaching the pure word of God. And that is countercultural. It's against the fads. It's against the trendiness in the church. We're not to be trendy. We're to be faithful to the word of God. That's what we're to be. And it says here, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and of love which is in Christ Jesus. The Bible is the word of God. And it's the Bible that encapsulates the message of the gospel. And it says here, Hold fast the words. The message is encapsulated in the words. That is true evangelicalism. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. We're to pass on the baton. We're to guard the faith. We're to pass it on. Your, your job as a preacher is to make sure that you pass on the gospel. To the next generation. And that means you're not at liberty to change the gospel. You're there to protect the gospel. To defend the gospel. And the gospel is that we're saved by grace. That Christ Jesus died on the cross. And gave his life for us. And shed his blood upon that cross. Took the wrath that you and I deserved. He took that wrath for us. The wrath of the father fell upon him. When he died on that cross we find the reconciliation with the Father. Our sins are forgiven and cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we become saved and born again. That is the gospel. That is the good news. And we're to guard it and we're to pass it on to the next generation. We're not to change it or to mould it or to um, take, it, take bits out of it. We're to pass it on and to be faithful in that. And we're to look for people that we can pass it on to. What we need to do is to pray and look for people that are faithful. And those faithful people, we're to encourage them to hold on to biblical truth and pass it on. Verse 14, that good thing which was committed unto to thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. We cannot do this ministry in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit. We need his power and strength. I think of Paul who said, not by might, not, uh, sorry, he said, we preach in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Verse 15. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are uh, Phygelus and Hermog Hermogenes. But he says, this knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me again, it's hard in ministry here. Paul is saying that there are many that have turned away from him. Imagine you're in a church and you're pastor in a church or you're preaching in a church and everybody leaves. This is the kind of experience Paul is experiencing. It's hard. He's in prison. And not only is he in prison, but many, many churches and leaders have, have departed from the faith. This is what we need to remember. Ministry is hard. It's tough. It's difficult. But we've got to be in the long haul of plodding on 
in the proclamation of the gospel. I think this is amazing and wonderful. It's reality. It's real. It's not hairy fairy mumbo jumbo stuff where we're all living in a, a make believe fake world. Paul is saying no. Ministry is tough. And, he, and, and he's spelling it out again and again in this book. Verse 16. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesophorus. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. And there is that wonderful comfort is that no matter how tough it gets in ministry, there's always a, a Barnabas or an individual who will encourage us. Verse 17. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Verse 18. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in the day and how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. So that's chapter 1. We're going to go into chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. And I'm going to cut it. I don't want to uh, keep you. I don't want to uh, keep you. So um, we'll uh, continue uh, this now. And... Um, So it says in chapter 2 Thou therefore my son be strong in the grace which is in Christ Jesus the things thou have heard, have heard of me and among many witnesses thou same commit thou unto faithful men who shall be able to teach others also Again the, the lessons are being repeated but we're to commit the faith to faithful men very often um we're, neg we're neglecting this in the church. Churches cannot grow and be sustained. Ministry cannot be sustained unless we choose a number of people within the church and train them up. And only those who are faithful men, those who have been shown to be faithful, do we entrust leadership to. It's very, very important. To find people who are stable in the faith, and and we need to be pray we need to be praying, and providing, um, discipleship programs within the church, so that people can grow in maturity and in leadership, so that when they're given leadership roles, they're found to be stable and strong in the faith. Okay, but we're neglecting this. We're really neglecting it. Uh, I've seen many churches that are that have grown fast but they've not spent a lot of time preparing their leaders and helping their leaders to be more grounded and because of this there's a lack of stability within the church or churches that get planted so focus your attention on building strong leaders by looking for people who are faithful and then spending time in discipling and preparing them whichever ministry you're in Spend time preparing people to take over your work. You're looking for faithful people. It says, And the things that thou hast heard of me, and among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others. So, again, we're not to... We're, we're, so many people today within the church are propagating their own ideas and opinions, and we're not to do that. We're there... We're there to propagate and teach the pure word of God, the unadulterated pure word of God and what the Bible teaches. Thou therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, verse 3. Again, I keep repeating this. This keeps getting repeated that if you're in ministry, it's hard, it's not easy. And no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man who also strive of masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. So Paul is saying here that be dedicated in the proclamation of the gospel. Be dedicated in, in doing that work. When, when people leave the church, when you get attacked and you're and you criticised, Keep your head and keep on 
and on and on preaching the word of God. Then it says in verse 16, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more and more. And the word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hermenius and Philetus. So as time goes on, there'll be people in your church who, and in your ministry who will be time wasters. They'll be just people who bring arguments. These are the kind of people that you need to avoid. If they bring in arguments, they'll bring instability in your Bible study group. They'll bring instability in your church. And you need to deal with them and tell them to stop, that this is not of God. You know, a person who really loves God, who really is growing, will want to know about the Word, feed on the Word. A person who is not of God will continue to stir up strife through arguments in the Bible study and in, and, and, and in the ministry of the churches of the church and you need to deal with it and tell them that this is not on that this is not a christian way to 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 conduct oneself verse 22 flee also youthful lust but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the lord out of a pure heart but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife what is what is here dealing with is He's not particularly just dealing with sexual sin when he says about lust. He's dealing with uh, a young man who is energetic, proud. A uh, young man can be energetic, proud, and arrogant. Okay? And, he, and, he, and he's saying, look, really, you need to be walking in humility. You need to be walking in that, that maturity. Uh, and, and not be taken up with what the youth are taken up with. Of your age in in the worldly sense, and it's, um, we get this in verse twenty five in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So, I'll just go on this side. So. We'll continue. Chapter 3 of the Word of God. Chapter 3. But this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incon in uh, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, uh, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captivity, woman, ca cap cap captive, captive, silly woman, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jan Janes and Jamborees withstood Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall pre proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs was also. So, what, what you've got to expect in ministry and not be discouraged is that there'll be many many people leaving your ministry but not only that false teachers will have a bit of success in the sense that it will look as if their ministry is doing okay so you not only get people leaving your ministry you also get people going to other ministries that are corrupt and that are false. Yet, on the surface, it seems as if they're doing okay. But we need to always remember that this is the, these people are preaching error. They're preaching things that are not of God. They, they are devilish and they're doing the work of the devil. And in due time, their ministries will be shown up for that. We just have to, again, continue to maintain 
our head and continue to plod on proclaiming the gospel. Verse 11, persecution affliction came unto me at Antioch and Iconium at Listeria, what persecution and I endured, but out of them all of the Lord delivered me. Yes, this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Ye and all that will live a godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So do you see how Paul is constantly weaving these themes, constantly bringing home these themes? It's going to get worse and worse, men deceiving themselves. But we have to realize that there's persecution coming our way. And, and we, we, we have to be realistic about it. But prepare ourselves, embrace ourselves for this and continue to get on with the work of an evangelist and the work as preachers of the gospel and ministers of the gospel. But he says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and be assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child that thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, again, we're to be faithful in the ministry of the word, and that it is the word of God. If we don't have an authority, then we have nothing. If we lose our authority, we, we lose everything. And we have an authority. Our, our authority is the word of God. That is our objective authority. And we give the enemy a foothold if we believe the enemy's lies. The enemy is sowing lies through various cults, through various deceptive means, through the media, etc. And we can either believe those lies, and if we believe those lies, we give the enemy power. But we strip the enemy of power when we show and reveal the truth. Because the truth exposes the lies. So one of the best ways we can defeat the enemy is open up the truth. Show what the truth is in any age. Proclaim the truth in any age, in any period of history, in any time. And it will expose the lies and it will defeat the enemy as we expose the lies through the truth. It's, that is a tremendous, liberating wonderful and powerful thing that will encourage you in these very very dark and difficult days that what we need to be doing most of all is expounding the word of God and showing people what the truth is and as we do that we'll have a powerful impact in our time and then uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now here, why would Paul say, I charge thee therefore before God? And the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the shall judge the quick and the dead, at his appearing, and his kingdom preach the word. This is uh, his last testimony, his, the last words of Paul. And he wants to bring home the importance of preaching the word of God. He could have, in his last words, he could have said, it's important uh, that the church uh, do singing, it's important that the church do healing. But his last words are, preach the word of God. Now why would Paul do that? Well, if he's doing that, it, it, it shows you that 
there was a danger that the churches were moving away from the word of God. So there's a real danger today that the church will move away from the word of God. So even more now than then, we need to exhort, preach the word. We need to be preaching the word of God in the churches and preaching the word of God and sharing the word of God in our ministry. There's a real danger that we don't preach the word, that we don't share the word of God in these days. And he says, I charge thee before God. So it's very solemn. He's taking this to a very solemn level. Look, this is very, very serious. Before God, preach the word. And then again, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. So we've come to the end of the book and uh, there's, there's more that uh, I could uh, I share but um, we'll leave it at that. I just hope that the thoughts that I've shared today will encourage you to um, preach the word of God, continue to hold fast to the word of God and continue uh, and, and pre pre prepare a leadership to pass on the baton for preaching the word of God and, and sharing the word of God. So I hope these little thoughts have, have been an encouragement to you. I, I, I've been so blessed today studying this book, so encouraged, and I hope that my thoughts will just encourage you to, to continue in your ministry and continue sharing the word of God in whatever capacity God has called you, whether as a pastor, whether as a, a preacher, whether as a an evangelist uh, or servant of the Lord. So I'm going to close in prayer. Um, so let's pray. Dear Father, we come before you today. Well, Father, I thank you that you've warned us that ministry can be tough and hard. But Father, we're not in it for ourselves. We're not in it for the short term. We're in it for the long haul to bring glory to you and and so father we pray that in the lord jesus name that father you will bless each person that hears this video watches this video and i pray that you would use it to build people up and i pray that many preachers and evangelists uh, father would be inspired and encouraged by this video and and that they would just go on to preach your word and, and be encouraged in you lord in jesus name amen Amen. I hope, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. And uh, read the book. Read to Timothy again. Meditate on it. And I hope it's a blessing to you. God bless you. Take care. Take care. God bless.